Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Waka Kodash, Yahweh, which is the one and true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, who will well and teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect, and shalom to you sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach, Ira Zakah, from the servants of Yahawah, Yahawah Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much in this lesson, you have people that don't have an understanding still of who salvation is for. Salvation is is not given to everybody. You have these 501c3 charter churches, these religions, they pushed they push that everyone of the world can be saved. They'll quote John 3:16 or they'll quote Galatians 3 and 28 or they'll quote um Romans 1 and 16 to claim that salvation is given to every person of the world. And that's not what the scriptures is saying. So we're going to prove in this lesson that salvation is only given to the Israelites. Who are you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Not every single person of the world is going to be saved. The Israelites are going to be saved. And we're going to prove that in this lesson, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. So the first precept I'm going to get out is that Isaiah 17, Isaiah chapter 45 and 17. This is Isaiah 45 and 17. It says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. The Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, we have an everlasting salvation. We have an everlasting covenant. We have an everlasting salvation. It says, Ye shall not be ashamed, nor a confounded world without end. So Israel, the nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, we have an everlasting salvation. Not every single person of the world is going to be saved. Because now that contradicts the scriptures, which I'm reading right here. This is John, or not John, this is um Jeremiah 3. I think it's 3 and 23. Jeremiah 3 and 23. It says, Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from, for, for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Who is this talking about? The 17 heathen nations. Their hope for salvation is vain. It says, Truly in the Lord our power is salvation of Israel. So there you go. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. Not every single person of the world is going to be saved. When you read John 3.16, that word world there, it goes into the Greek word of cosmos, which means constitution or government. So that's talking about the Israelites, the Israelites and Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai coming back for the Israelites. That's what that John 3.16 is referring to. That's not talking about all people. This is uh, Psalms 147. And verse 19, and it says, he showed his word unto Jacob, who is Jacob, the Israelites. He showed his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Verse 20, he hath not dealt so with any nations. So there you go. In that case, if everyone of the world was to be saved, Psalms 147, it wouldn't say that there. When you read Psalms 147 and 20, this scripture, it wouldn't say that there. Why would the scriptures say he have not dealt so with any nation? The Lord is telling you he's not dealing with everybody. Not every single person of the world is going to be saved. And not every single Israelite is going to be saved. Only the elect is going to be saved, which we're hoping to be. Because it also goes into the remnant. When you read Zechariah 13 and 8, it says two-thirds of Israel should be put to death, which are the ones that, that are not repenting. Those that are not withdrawing themselves from this society. Those that stay embedded in this society, they're going to be destroyed. But the Israelites, they're going to receive salvation. Salvation is really only for the Israelites. 
the Israelites mainly are the ones that's going to receive salvation, not all people. This is Psalms 147 and 20. It says, He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Because the Lord never dealt with these 17 heathen nations. The Lord has only dealt with the Israelites. All right? And what I said, let's prove that as well. Not all Israel is going to be saved either. And this is um, Zechariah uh, 13, uh, 13 and 8. In Zechariah 13 and 8, it says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. The two parts is talking about the two-thirds, 66.6%. .6%. That's a lot of Israelites that's going to be destroyed, that the Lord is going to put to death. He's going to destroy them because they didn't repent, right? They're not coming out of the ways of society. But the third shall be left therein, which is the elect, which we're hoping to be. So the elect of the nation of Israel are going to be saved. Who the elect are, are you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians? The elect of the nation of Israel is going to be saved. Not all Israel is going to be saved either. But mainly, salvation, mainly though, salvation is for Israel. That's the main thing. And I got another precept. This is, um, we're going to get to that John 3.16 there. This is John 3.16. 16 because you got a lot of people they abuse the scripture here, but they're not fully understanding the interpretations of the scripture This is John three sixteen. It says for the most high sh So loved the world right that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever Believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life So you got people that read this here and they say that the Lord died for everybody's sins But that's not what this scripture is talking about this scripture is talking about the Israelites. Yahweh Shai, when he came on the earth, he died for the Israelites to get that grace, to get that repentance, right? Repentance is only given to the Israelites. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. So let's prove what we're saying. When you go into the Greek word of that meaning of that word world there, right? Strong's G, 2889, Cosmos. Cosmos. Con. It says cosmos, which is 2889. It says an apt or harmonious agreement or constitution, order, or government. This is talking about the Israelites, the elect. Let's prove it. Revelations 14 and verse 1. It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on a mountain of Zion. That lamb is referring to the Messiah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his true name is Jehoshai. That's referring to the Messiah, Jehoshai. He's the lamb. Let's prove that and we will go back. This is St. John 1 and 29. And it says the next day, see, it says the next day John seeth. And John, this is talking about John the Baptist here. It says the next day John seeth Yahweh Shai coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of the Most High, which taketh away the sins of the world. So this is talking about the elect of the nation of Israel and Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai and the elect. All right. So that proves that. So now we go back to Revelations 14 and 1. It says, And I looked and lo, a lamb. So now you know the lamb is talking about the Messiah, Yahweh Shai. It says, A lamb stood on the Mount of Zion, which Yahweh Shai, he's going to be at the top, and with him 144,000, which the 144,000 is all the elect men. But you're going to have the elect that's under that, the men, women, and children under that. So you're going to have the 144,000, which is the all the elect men, and you're going to have, then you're going to have the men, women, and children under that. Which goes to uh, Revelation 7 and 9. The great multitude, right? And it says, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And that goes into that sealing. Because the elect of the nation of Israel is going to be sealed, right? With knowing the name of the Lord. And they're going to be sealed. This is Revelation 7 and 3. To bring out what I'm saying. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. Till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads see so the israelites they're going to be sealed with the name with the knowing of the name of the lord they're going to receive that sealed that that spiritual uh m-a-r-k that spiritual sealing right not the physical but the spiritual m-a-r-k the spiritual m-a-r-k that spiritual mark which goes to ezekiel 9 and 4 they're going to receive that sealing they're going to be sealed with the knowing of the name of the Lord. Verse 4 it says. And I have heard the number of them. 
which were sealed. You see that? And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And this is not talking about believers. This is talking about the actual 12 tribes of the nation of Israel being sealed. This is when they were going to receive that salvation. This is uh, Proverbs 18 and 10, right? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and is safe. So they're going to receive the sealing of the name of the Lord. They're going to be sealed with the knowing of the name of the Lord, right? They're going to receive that sealing. They're going to be sealed. You see that? Let's go back. So now, when we go back to Revelation 14 and 1, this is talking about the elect. This is talking about the Israelites. This is who salvation is for. Revelation 14 and 1, it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount of Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So this is talking about the elect of the nation of Israel being saved. They're going to be sealed with the knowing of the name of the Lord. You see that? Let's get out that Amos. Amos 3 and 1. It says, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, Verse 2, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So that's who the Lord is dealing with, the Israelites. He's not dealing with all people. Not every single person is going to be saved. Not every single person of the world is going to be saved. Why would the Lord save people that he, that he don't, he's not dealing with? The Lord is only dealing with the Israelites. It says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth, the Israelites. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. And this is why we're going through a temporal punishment right now. This is why we're at the bottom and you 17 heathen nations are ruling over us. And let me give you a demonstration of what I'm talking about. You 17 heathen nations, right? From number two all the way down to 18, you guys are ruling over us right now. The Israelites, which is number one, which is of the 12 tribes, as you see up here, we're at the bottom. From Judah all the way down to Issachar, we're at the bottom. The 17 heathen nations from number 2 on down to 18 is ruling over us right now. That's why we're at the bottom. Because we're suffering afflictions of our forefathers. We broke the old covenant. So right now we're at the bottom. But the Lord is getting ready to flip everything back into his rightful state and his order. So we're going to be ruling after this. This is why, again, not every single person of the world is going to be saved. And we proved it. Let's get out that uh, that Romans 1 and 16. Because they'll use this. Romans 1 and 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Yahweh Shai, for it is the power of the Most High unto salvation unto everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That Greek there is talking about Israelite foreigners. You had Israelites of the flesh. They had a Gentile state of mind. All right. When you go into the time of the solicit rule, you know, going back to Alexander the Greek and his four generals, you have Ptolemy, Cassandor, Seleucus, and Lysimachus. But during the mainly during the solicit rule, you had Antiochus the the first, the second, the third, the fourth Epiphanes. And during the time of uh, Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes, he uh, uh, Hellenized the Israelites. Right? They couldn't keep the Sabbaths, the high holy days, or any of that. They couldn't circumcise their children any of that. That's mentioned in 2 Maccabees, the 6th chapter. If they were caught doing that, they were executed and put to death right then and there. So you had Israelites, they were Hellenized. They were Israelites of the flesh, but they had a Gentile state of mind. They were cast out as Greeks. They were cast out as heathens, but they were Israelites. So that Jew there first, that's talking about the Israelites, right? And it says also to the Greek, that Greek there is talking about Israelite foreigners. You had the Israelites that was in their heritage, and you had the Israelites that weren't in their heritage. They were Hellenized. They were Israelites of the flesh with a Gentile state of mind. They were cast out as heathens. So when you see those precepts there to the Jew first, also the Greek, that Greek there is talking about Israelite foreigners. And we can prove that when you go to... um. Acts 6 and 1, which I want to get. It says, In those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of Grecians, right? It says, Against the Hebrews that were widows in their, it says, and widows were neglected in their daily ministration. Now, when you go into the meaning of that word Grecian there, which we always get out for edification, it goes into G1675, which is that word Grecian there goes into the Greek word Eleni Stace. Which it goes into the English translation as Hellenist. All right. Strong's G, 1675, 
Helene's taste. Helene's taste. See, it says a Hellenist. So that word Grecian goes into the Greek word Helene stace, which goes to the English translation of it as Hellenist. And when you look up a Hellenist, it's one who imitates the manners and customs or the worship of the Greeks and use the Greek tongue. So these were Israelites. They were Israelites of the flesh. They were, but they were speaking Greek. They were dressing Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They were cast out as Gentiles, right? This is to prove it. Used in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. Here it is right here. It says a Hellenist, Hellenistes, from the derivative of 1672, a Hellenist or a Greek speaking Jew. So there you go. So when you go into that Romans 1 and 16, that's talking about Israelite foreigners, Israelites that were in the ways of the Greeks and the Romans. Yeah, you had Israelites that were speaking Greek, dressing Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They were cast out as heathens. They even went from having Israelite names to taking on Greek names. So that's why when you read in the scriptures and it talks about those Greeks, those are those are foreigner Israelites. Those are Israelites there that they were talking about. I was all talking about Israelites. That was not talking about natural Gentiles. So like yeah. this is Galatians 3 and 28, because people love using this. Galatians 3, 28. It says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. That Greek there is talking about Israelite foreigners. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Yahweh Shai. That Greek there is talking about Israelite foreigners. We prove that in Acts 6 and 1. And that Jew is talking about the Israelites. All right, the southern kingdom, the Israelites. So when you see that word Greek, that's talking about Israelite foreigners. You had Israelites, they were scattered among the heathen. The Lord discontinued us from our heritage. We were scattered. Which you can read that in James 1 and 1. It says, James, a servant of Yahweh and of and of the Lord, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, right, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. So the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, which you see right here, they were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, which is mentioned in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, Deuteronomy 28 and 64. So you had the Israelites, they were scattered because the Going back, the, the northern kingdom fell first, you know, going into uh, the Assyrian Empire, right? When you read in the scriptures, the southern kingdom fell first. When you read 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, the southern kingdom fell first, right? And then it was the southern, then the, the northern kingdom fell first, Salakia. The northern, the northern kingdom fell first, the northern kingdom fell first, and then the only kingdom that was left was the southern kingdom. So the southern kingdom, they went through. The Babylonian Empire, the Medio Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. The Southern Kingdom did. Now the Northern Kingdom, they went into, they went into uh, uh, the captivity to the Assyrians, and then they revolted against the Assyrians, and then they went to a land where no man dwelt, which is the land of Azareth, which is mentioned in Second uh, Second Edges, the 13th chapter, starting from verse 39, reading down to verse 44, or 45, where it talks about the the Northern Kingdom revolting. Against the authority of the Assyrian Empire. So when that happened, Judah was the only tribe left, right? Which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's why when the time of Yahushai during the Roman Empire, that was all the southern kingdom. Now you had a little bit of the northern kingdom there, but majority of that kingdom at that time of the Roman Empire and all of that was the southern kingdom. The Babylonian Empire, the Medio Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire, that's all southern kingdom. So that's why when you go into the New Testament and it talks about the Jews and the Greeks, that's talking about Israelites and Israelite foreigners. So, uh, salvation is not for everybody. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. Salvation is only given to Israel. Not all people. Not every single person of the world is going to be saved. Israel is going to be saved. So, Lord wills, that's what's edifying. Till next time I say, Shalom.